Put your hair on. Like many families in the 90s, the Kennedys of Kernersville always had a camcorder around. Well, she just wanted to shave. Have a picture made with it. Hours of home videos featuring sisters Jordan and Taylor. Their mom, Kathy, would make frequent cameos when she wasn't behind the viewfinder. She always took pictures. She took videos of everything that was going on in their life. Just about every moment, smile and laugh <laughs> captured on tape before it all abruptly stopped. October 17, 1994, a murder at a Kernersville apartment complex. It was the worst day of my life. Uh, I got a call from my mom and she said, you have to get, I was at work, she said, you have to get up here, Kathy is dead. Kathy's sister, Diane, remembers that day vividly. Police say someone strangled and stabbed Kathy as her two young daughters slept in another room. Her daughter, Jordan, who was just four years old at the time, was the first to see her. I went to go find her so she could get me some more water and I saw her laying on the floor. Even at that young age, Jordan says she remembers everything clearly, even when her grandma, who they call Mima, showed up hours later. I just remember her sitting down on the couch and just weeping and crying. And um, I was just standing there like with her, just watching her, knowing something bad was happening, but not really knowing how to process it. Kathy's husband, David, was on a friend's fishing trip at the beach when it happened. I was totally awestruck, you know, devastated at that time, you know. It was a shocking moment. The days that followed were filled with mixed emotions. It was awful and it was uplifting because people just came and ask what they could do for us. As police searched for the killer, the Kennedy family was forced to push on without their matriarch. Weeks, months, years went by without any answers. The Kennedy girls were growing up without their mother, and it was starting to affect younger sister Taylor, who wasn't even a year old when it happened, so she has no memory of her mother. She'd be sad about it a lot more, even though she never met her. Um, and. I remember there was one time when she was in elementary school that her teacher talked to my dad about it because she would just come to school crying every day holding a picture of her. I think I saw, you know, other people making like the Mother's Day gifts and things like that or having their moms come eat lunch with them. So I think that's when for me it really started to like feel like I was different. And so that was really, really hard. As the girls entered their teenage years, they found out about the home videos, many of them featuring their late mom. In an instant, everything changed. And seeing us being cared for by a mother was like an out-of-body experience. Like, I did have one of those at one point, and she did treat me like I always dreamed of my, my mom treating me. I just bawled my eyes out because I'd never heard her say my name before. You know, I, I didn't really know her voice. Um, I didn't know the little nicknames that she had for me. So like hearing all of that was really healing in a way, but again, just like so much sadness. Through these tapes, Jordan and Taylor had a treasure trove of small glimpses into their early lives. Videos showing mom playing with them, interacting with the camera and showing them affection. It was solid proof they had a mother who loved and cared for them. I haven't been motherless all along. Um, we did have that bond with her before it was taken from us, and we have videos to go back and like enjoy that time. For once, I had my own memory, you know, and it wasn't like a real-time memory, but still, like, it existed, and it was me and her. Over the years, Kathy's family yeah. members learned to live with the possibility they might not ever find her killer. And I know that it's probably never going to be solved. So um, I'm resolved to live with that. As her daughters got older, their attitudes toward what happened also shifted. I started to let go of a lot of that, like, anger and resentment that I had. Um, I started to get closer to God and understand his heart and who he is. I know that. God has righteous anger towards this person and I don't have to carry that burden. You know, I can 
live my life at peace knowing he will take care of it mm -hmm. and not let it make me into this bitter, resentful person that cannot enjoy the life that I'm sure she always wanted me to have. They faced other challenges as the years passed. Like the day Taylor got engaged, a fire burned down the family home. One of the few things left untouched by the flames, a huge portrait of Kathy in her wedding dress. It was just like a little bit of, you know, good in a lot of bad. So. And the home video survived. That yeah. was the other crucial piece that we were really worried yeah. about. One of the few links to their past spared by the fire. Taylor and Jordan are both married now with young kids of their own. They hope to one day share all the good stuff with them. There are small reminders of Kathy to spark that conversation, like this stone outside Taylor's front door. Again, it'll just be another way for our kids to, you know, remember her, remember her and know that she's here and an opportunity for us to see it and think about her. So I think it just, it feels like she's close. Starting to tell their kids about their grandmother has been healing, but it's also been difficult. He said, um, what happened to her? And I just said, you know, she's just, she's in heaven with Jesus. We don't have to worry about that. Like she's, she's great. She's fine. She's happy. And he said, but I love her. I haven't, I haven't met her yet. And so that just like mm -hmm. broke my heart because you got like me either, buddy, but. Even through the grief, they're looking forward to sharing the type of person she was. I want to share her silly side. Mm -hmm. which is like all her videos, really. Mm -hmm. um, she, the country accent. The country accent. Her and Diane and Meemaw, the way that they interacted yeah. together, they're so funny. I would say her sense of humor. <laughs> she loved to laugh and, you know, make jokes and crack people up. She was very faithful friend to anybody. If they need help, she was willing to help them. She had a great personality. She had a great smile. She had a great laugh and a sense of humor. Sense of humor, her smile, um, how much she cared for us. It was very obvious her love for us in these videos that we have. Videos that will forever provide a glimpse into the past, a past that was stolen from this family, but one they're determined to pass on to the next generation, no matter what. The Kernersville Police Department wouldn't comment on the case since it's still open, but I spoke with a now retired detective who used to be over this case. She told me investigators have some DNA evidence, but to this point, it's not been enough to find a match. She's hopeful advances in technology can one day determine who it belongs to.